Hello there, and everyone. Welcome back to the Rosal Record Sound Studios. We were uh, did a little uh, last week. We did what did we do? A little. Uh, we did a little WrestleMania live. Segment, right? Yeah, during the John Cena match, which, which made it even better. Yeah, people people need to understand. Uh, just like uh, the Catholics don't miss uh, uh, Ash Wednesday, yeah. I don't miss WrestleMania. Right. <laughs> Anyways, my name is Alex Myers. Alongside me is the Super Cedar Brothers, Albert and Gamma. This is Five Round MMA. Uh, I know. I guess we, we wouldn't be uh, uh, fans of wrestling if we were talking about the Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, by the street has ended 21 and 1. Uh, just you guys have thoughts on it. I know it's the MMA, but still, it has something to do with the MMA. Brock Lesnar ended another streak. People said he couldn't be ranked Couture. Time, he beat Ranked Couture. I, I always try to group everything. Wrestling, Dragon Ball Z, it's all about him. It's all yeah. in one big category. People Peter, need to understand that. Peter Pan. Right? Uh, honestly, at first, I was shocked, but I think just seeing the people's reaction was enough for me. <laughs> I mean, that thing was gold. Carol. And that's what I was going to say is like, uh, I was rooting for The Undertaker to c- continue the streak just because, you know, I you know that what, Brock you... Lesnar had no chance. Yeah. But now that I think about it, it was actually perfect for WWE ending the, the streak to Brock Lesnar. The but then alone. the reaction alone. That thing was gold, <laughs> really man. It was, yeah, it was making. Like I, said, the... I think the reactions alone was worth WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Lesnar's a guy who couldn't beat Randy Couture, beat Randy Couture. Who couldn't beat Shane Cowan, beat Shane Cowan. Who couldn't beat Frank Man a second time, beat him. When it came came glasses, though, he couldn't beat him. But oh well. <laughs> but every good streak comes in there. But as uh, for, for our show this week, we got. Um, Bellator fighter Justin Baseman on next segment should be awesome interview. We're also gonna talk about uh, uh, Big Nog and <laughs> big, <laughs> big Country. country. Yeah, he's still, he's still struggling. Just Roy Nelson. Uh, uh, too many bigs. The big way, boys. Man. The uh, big boys. Yeah. And also we got another heavyweight bout coming up in the UFC. But as for right now, I want to play a game I like to call the nickname game. <clears throat> All right. So I uh, compiled. I know everybody's a nickname too. So do you really? So, we'll see. That we'll see. That's pretty goes. bad. So uh, I, I compiled a list of uh, nicknames of fighters who competed on the fight night with Roy Nelson and O'Gara. Yeah. And I made up one of them. So I want you, you guys to pick up gun. which one's the one I made up, right? All right. So I know this is hard. They had a bunch of people that didn't know. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I did it. So uh, and the, the made up nickname might be associated with the real life fighter somewhere, but he wasn't on this card. Okay. So okay. So there you go. All right. Yeah. So this okay. is something I'll, I'll try. You want to play too? All I try wants to play. Okay, so these are nicknames of fighters who took who participated in the UFC fight night in Abu Dhabi. So the first one is Hot Sauce. The second one is Brutal. The third one is The End. The fourth nickname is The Big Show. And the last nickname is The Beast. Albert, which one did I make up? The Big Show, man. Okay. And, and if someone has that nickname, they should go get sued and <laughs> get taken off, man, because that's horrible. Okay, Albert's going with The Big Show. All of the trolley. Uh, what nickname did I make up? Hot sauce? <laughs> okay. Uh, Guillermo, what I will name? be called mild sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say hot sauce. Hot I, sauce? I, I think that's not a really, I mean. It's because he, he's never been hit with the hot sauces, son. Yeah. That's why you don't know. What about Steven Russell? What nickname did I make up? The Beast? Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, that one's just too obvious. That's one. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are all wrong. Which one was the it? The nickname I made up was The End. <laughs> I didn't even hear that hey, one. You guys I thought you were saying this is the end no, of my list. No, it was in the middle. It was in the middle. <laughs> uh, actually, Hot Sauce was a former guest of ours, Trevor Smith. Well, yeah, but he was he on the Fight Night card? Yeah, he was on the Fight Night card. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> I knew that, I knew that but yeah. I didn't think he was on the card. Yeah, so Hot Sauce belonged to Trevor Smith. Uh, Brutal belonged to Johnny Bedford. Uh, the End was made up. The Big Show actually belonged to Josh Rosal- Rosenthal. And the ref? No, the the fighter. <laughs> and then the beast belonged to Jim Ehlers. So looks like the nickname gave us a game a good one that nobody won so far. So uh, I'll try to do not count this to anybody who uh, the top rated star of the the show. So uh, what are you guys' favorite nicknames? You have favorite nicknames? A uh, fighter. Uh, the dragon is the always dragon? a favorite. Um, I'm always I've always been a big fan of no nickname. No you nickname. Just yeah, Cain Velasquez, Velasquez, man. Velasquez. That's all you need. Isn't he the Mexican here? No, oh, man, that's Joey. <laughs> that's Joey Beltran. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. What about like some? Yes, have some like uh, horrible nicknames. Just kind of like why is that guy even carrying that nickname? Like wasn't like, oh, like was... Iceman? That one's a horrible <laughs> one. <laughs> or like remember Josh Barnett, the baby face assassin. Oh yeah, the baby face assassin. Um, uh, what what is it? Um, uh, even though I think Mark Hunt should be Mark the Super Saiyan, huh? He's just a but super Samoan. Super Samoan, but who, I think who was the baby face assassin? Josh Barnett. What, what about the young assassin? Wasn't it, wasn't Kenny Florian's K Flow? I think so. Is, is he, it, are you going to put your name within your nickname? True. I don't, your nickname. I, you I don't have your nickname That's A Rod. A Rod. But he, he, he wasn't Alex A Rod Rodriguez. He was just A Rod. Yeah. See that? <coughs> um, I think isn't young assassin Scott Jurgensen? No, 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 no. It's uh, he had, he bleaches his hair. 
Uh, well, I got one for Hector Lombard. He should be Hector. I'm your poppy Lombard. Uh, or, uh, I'm, I'm Albert's poppy. <laughs> Melvin Gillard. That one's good, too. Oh, uh, uh, Melvin Gillard. Yeah, I don't like Melvin Gillard because what, what, when he gets what older, he get, he's like not, right now. He's, like not, yeah. he's, right he's right now. not the young assassin anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of switching either. Once you pick it, you stay with it. Hey, what about Diego Sanchez? That's why, that's why I'm bringing that up. He should always be. That's where he made his critical error. He should always be the nightmare. The nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, but it, it, in, until this day, that's still probably the best promo ever. If you go look up BJ Penn versus Diego Sanchez, watch the promo, and it does the you know he, w- he he's the nightmare for his his opponents <laughs> and shows him. I mean, it's one of the best promos ever. In, to in dream. But it was a perfect, lifestyle yeah. change. I mean, but you got also like outside of sports. But it shouldn't be a nickname change. Yeah, like so. Tito Ortiz, then he changes too to um uh, the the people's champ or something like that. Something uh, for, well, for years like he was Hunter T Beach Batch, uh, Bad, Bad Boy, Boy and then he became uh, like the people's champ or something. Well, like that. What, what about so like the, the nicknames that also like just basically that becomes a person's nickname like Shogun. No, because yeah, of Mauricio, true. it's all it's always it's always show on show on show on. And technically, Chuck Liddell, everyone says, yeah, "Oh no, I haven't said Chuck." But like, it's always like, "Oh, you're fighting, you know, Shogun. You're not fighting no, Mauricio, yeah. you know, yeah. so, or like, you know, you have um, Big well, Nog, Big Nog, yeah, Big, big Nog, Nog, Little Nog, Big Country, yeah." So I, I think, uh, yeah, big country, big country, and the big rig is John. Uh, yeah, you never hear John people Hager. say the baby face assassins uh, gonna yeah. fight. <laughs> so you think like a nickname is kind of like a do or die for like a fighter, right? It's kind of like if you have a good nickname, then you want to promote it. If not, then it's like, what does this guy care this name? And then there's there's a unique thing too when uh, people forget the first name and they just go by the last name, like Frank Mir. You never hear people say Frank, whatever. They, they yeah, always hear Mir, 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 Mir. It's but one word Brock Lesnar, you always hear Brock. Brock. You know. Yeah. Or like is WWA is the next big thing. It's always a cool one. But yeah, that was a nickname game. I thought a little fun. Like obviously these guys didn't watch the Abu Dhabi one, and I had the benefit of doing the no. research for this. You know game, why so. I didn't see it? Because <laughs> it was on the five pass. The five pass is over. Not only is it, it you're, you're paying ten bucks, but you don't get the, the same like quality a weird time too. Same, same quality yeah. as the WWE Network because I was able to see. Yes, I was able to see WrestleMania <laughs> on my WWE Network for just ten dollars a month. But guess what? I'm not able to see the other pay per views huh. with my uh, fat fight pass. So I also uh, heard that uh, they're struggling for some sponsor. Uh, for a subscription, the W Network, they think about raising the price. Is that true? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true because they did not receive their million. They, they thought they were going to get a million subscribers by now, yeah. and they haven't. I think they should just, you know, stick with it. Uh, it's it's why a good is, thing. Why is that? I want to dwell on this because you've, you've been uh, harping the W Network for a Why is not? Uh, why is it cut out? It's available everywhere. I think it's How many two reasons does Netflix have? I mean, you think about it. If every person in the, every arena at WWE should have the W Network, right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's, but I, well, I think it's two major things. One, if you don't watch wrestling, you don't really know about it. And mm-hmm. I think people still don't understand the WWE Network. They know that's some kind of 24-hour channel. But I don't think they understand what they get or, like, what what, what essentially what it really is. And the second thing is you forget that their main audience is still children. And it's hard to for the kid to tell the dad, listen, you p- it's still paying $60 from the pay-per-views I ask you. You just pay $10 a month, and I still get them. And I think it's kind of hard. For the children to explain to the parents I I how the subscription works. For me, I think the WWE Network is like for aimed at our audience, of yeah. our age, right? I think it's aimed for the older kid, uh, older audience. Uh, the thing I, the problem for WWE Network is that it's on USA. You can always catch it, or you can watch SmackDown. Well, on that's the, well, that's the other thing too. You can't see Raw in the WWE Network. Yeah. Uh, so people that that still want to be caught up or watch it, they can still just click on yeah. USA and watch it because you you're already you paying for your cable. Bill, yeah, you so. can't you can't see it in WWE Network. Why am yeah. I gonna pay ten dollars extra to watch? But you well, you know what you could see you could see some backstage uh, stuff from 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 Raw. You could see the after show. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I think maybe the probably starting to do some commercials in the WWE Network. In the last yeah, yeah. Right? I I think as the pay per views keep pumping now, I think people are gonna see that it, it is worth it. it. And yeah. then the other thing is, uh, we bought DVDs so for so long. You know, we have the you know the That's ultimate true too. Yeah. Macho Man, the the <laughs> Eddie Guerrero the ones package. I want to see. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So uh, nickname game over. W Network might be over. Maybe no, no. no. All right, so stick around, guys. But it might go to twelve ninety five. Twelve ninety five. I'm about to catch my subscription that much. No, uh, I'll keep it. I'll so stick around. It. We got. Uh, I'll go up to twenty. Justin Baseman coming up next, guys. Stick around. Please visit fiveroundmma.com on our social media on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram. Five round MMA.com. All right, join us now on the five round MMA hotline is Bellator fighter Justin Baseman. Justin, how you doing, man? Good, good. Thank you for having me on. Uh, thank you for joining us. I want to uh, get right cut right to the chase. Uh, how sour of a taste is it getting a draw on your record last week on Bellator? Oh man, uh, to be perfectly honest, I, at first it was a little, it was a little rough, man, but. Um, it, it affected my career as a win, so I'm not upset. Yeah. But, and it, you know, it, it, it's always hard. It, it's always hard getting to the judges. You know, I never want to see those judges. I always try to go for the finish. Um, 
so yeah, it's 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 always a bad thing just getting to the judges, but then a draw, it gets it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I don't, like, like you said, there was a positive coming off for it. Even though, the, the, record-wise, it's not what you wanted. It's not a W. But you, th- that was basically fight of the night. Even uh, Bellator president uh, Bjorn Remney was in love with you guys' performance. So it is kind of a silver lining, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not too bad in this case. I mean, nobody wants to draw. I think most fighters don't even want to go to the decision. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, no, it's no big deal. I didn't lose any sleep over it. Um, you know, I know that it's, it's just going to help me get closer because if anybody was there, like actually there, and they seen everything that was going on in the second round, and they know it should have been stopped. But yeah, that's it's true. okay. It's okay. And then, Justin, this is Albert. Um, it, it, you guys you guys had actually uh, an, an awesome fight, epic fight. For you, do you think it's better that the fans see this rematch, or is it more important to you to try to enter the tournament? Yeah, from here... From here, I'm going to the tournament. That's what I was told. Oh, wow. um, something might something might come up before that. Um, I might have another main card fight before that. Everything's still in the making, but for sure, I'm in the next tournament. And I and I think I'm not positive, but I think I might even meet up with Herman Toronto in the quarterfinals. Oh wow! Oh, wow. I, uh, that's a good thing about Bellator. They, they recognize what the fans want, and like they actually you know uh, have it set up where the fans get to see these great matches again, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Uh, yeah, they listen to the people, and uh, I think they're going to set that up because there was so much talk about a rematch after that fight. I mean, it was crazy. There's a lot of controversy involved, but at the same time, everybody was happy. I don't mind. I don't mind going head up with them again. So it, like I was saying, I, I posted on, uh, I, I threw a tweet out, and I said, you know, it might have been a draw, but it's a win-win for me. Yeah, there you go. I know this was your second fight in Bellator. What's it like uh, competing for a, a, an organization that, that's so huge right now? You know, uh, my first fight in the tournament against Brent Weedman, uh, it, it, it got to me a little bit. You know, I, I didn't think it would because I just fought for the Nick Diaz car, the, the war, and I was yeah. the main event for that. Yeah. A lot of pressure on that fight, you know. So I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm fine. But it was just a whole new level. I remember being in the cage with Brent, and I was just thinking so much. And I usually don't do that. I just go with the flow. So I'm thinking, like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to be exciting. You know, I, I forgot the reason why they signed me. You know, I mean, they're trying to prove myself all over again. So, yeah, mentally it was a little rough, you know. Uh, and I didn't fight my fight, and, and that made me, you know, come out with the loss. But it, it, it's okay. You know, we, we all learn, and I learned so much from my losses, so I'm not too mad. But, yeah, a lot of pressure mentally going into Bellator. And then, uh, Justin, this is Guillermo. I just want to ask you really quick, uh, you know, towards the end of the one, one of the rounds, you were um, uh, well, getting back to the fight is uh, you're hitting him and you thought the fight was over. Do you think uh, the fight should have been over at that point? And then a little bit, if you can speak on your jiu-jitsu, because it seemed like towards the end of the fight, you know, you were caught in the arm bar and then you escaped it very, very good. So if you can just talk about a little bit on, on both things. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, the, the referee was, was right there. In, in our ear, saying he's going to stop it, saying he's going to stop it. Um, I've been in a situation like that before. It, you know, if anybody's listening, you can look up uh, Basin versus Carlos Canez. I, I was doing the same thing, just beating the guy, and I almost wanted to look up at the ref like, come on, are you guys related? Stop this. <laughs> so what I did with Carlos, <laughs> you know, what I did with Carlos was I just picked him up and choked him out, you know, and just and just made sure it was finished. But it was so close, and he was right there, and he was screaming at us, and I thought for sure it was going to be stopped. I think nine times out of ten that fight would have been stopped. So it is what it is. But uh, I, I'm just glad the guy's okay, you know, because even though those elbows were short, those were with my body. Those are really hard elbows. I don't know yeah. if the ref ever been elbowed in the face. But if he had <laughs> before, you'd think he would have stopped it, you know? Yeah, I, I would imagine not. That's why the referees, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you know, so that, that's that's kind of rough. Yeah, hey, just I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, where you're from and the fight, the fight scene uh, up in Northern California and Martinez and Pittsburgh, all that place, and talk about the people you train with and the, and the Stockton and Diaz brothers and, and also your good friend uh, Rick Rieger, who's a former guest on this show and is an awesome guy. So let's talk about you know the guys you train with and the fight scene up there in Northern California. Oh yeah, well you know I train uh. I train all through Northern California and Nevada. I, I jump to about six or seven different gyms. But, yeah, I go over to Fight Core with Rick Rieger and uh, Sean Sharkey and a bunch of guys there. Rick Rieger has been my corner man for a long time. And, uh, he's yeah, he's been a blessing in my career because he's a tough dude, man. So 
I don't I don't really need too many people to train with as long as I got that guy, you know, because we can do do it all. He's a great so dude. I like going down to fight court. I go down to Combat Fitness with uh, George Tatsui and uh, his guys over there, like Brandon Vando's over there, Eric Lawson, you know. Uh, th- then I go to to uh, Charles Gracie. I got uh, Zach Bunnell over there, and I go to Reno Academy of Combat. You know, I got Rick Pullup over there, and I, I go to all these different gyms. I-, I train with the Diaz brothers. I train with Anthony Johnson. You know, oh, I- wow. I've-, I've been there with the big dogs, and it's a great feeling. I just got the invite to go to AKA and uh, wow, wow. and El Nino and stuff. Everybody's been hitting me up lately. So it's nice, you know, to travel around. And I just like getting in there with those guys that don't know me. You know, they're like, yeah. oh, who's this guy? <laughs> and they're trying to jack me up because the, the respect comes in and they don't want to hurt me. It's like, you got to hurt me. You got to try to kill me because the guy that says it isn't going to be like, oh, this is just the best. He's going to try to kill me. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need those guys that don't know me, you know, to try to try to prove something and come up in the game. I need that pressure. Okay, and then uh, just speaking on on Rick a little bit, um, he's part of the RMA organization, uh, so you know it's the anti bullying, you know MMA against the bullying. Uh, so we just yeah. want to ask you really quick: uh, Have you heard of uh, RMA? And then if if you have, uh, could you tell us like a a bullying, you know, maybe uh, some inspirational words, you know, against bullying? Oh yeah, no, I I've, I've heard of it and uh, heard of it through Rick actually, and and I and I love programs like that, you know, because when I was younger, I had to go through that, you know, I was bullied and stuff, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of rough, but there's some cases where you get through it, and there's some cases where you don't, and it's pretty sad, you know, but um, you just gotta try to try to rise above that and, and be stronger and realize that a person bullying has has something really wrong with them, like it could be something at home. It could be something with with self confidence, you know, and and it's rough and, and it's sad, and it seems like it's getting worse. But uh, you know, if you're out there getting bullied, man, just just try to stay away from that. Nothing wrong with that. Get away from it. Keep doing what you got to do to be happy for yourself. Because I've been through that. You know, it's 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 not easy. That's true. And then uh, real quick, Justin, uh, one thing we get asked a lot is uh, the the fighters' nicknames. You know, where they come up with it? Is there a story behind it? And, uh, of course, yours is Raw Deal. Can you let us know how you came up with that? Or who gave oh, it to yeah. You? I, was, uh, I, I was sitting in my, uh, in my coach's house, uh, my, my very first coach, the guy that actually got me into the game, Rudy Valentine. We're sitting there, and I'm, I'm listening at one of his old boxing books. And this guy in the boxing book, uh, you know, he went like 37 rounds and not a scratch on his face. And the other guy out the ring beat up. And I guess all of his fights, <laughs> he just dances around these guys and never gets hit. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like you. You know, I'm going to start calling you the raw deal. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm that good. But yeah, you know. <laughs> and it kind of started from that old boxing book, man. And uh, and that, that one kind of stuck more because he was, he was also calling me um, – he was also calling me Ghost Punch because early in my career, I was back, I got really fast, oh, you know. Wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so he would call me that too. But the, but the Raw Deal actually stuck. And yeah, I think the Raw Deal is a good nickname, huh, guys? No, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, a lot of people make fun of me. Oh, what is it? The real deal? The Raw Deal? The Raw Meal? <laughs> I'm like, the Raw Meal? The Raw Meal? They called me at work, and oh god, you know, it's like whatever. <laughs> All right, hey, Justin, we'll let you go. I know you got a lot of things ahead of you, but uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. And let us know your next Bellator fight. We'd love to, ha- love to have you on again uh, to promote uh, your okay. upcoming bout. But uh, we really appreciate it. You can follow Justin on, on Twitter at Justin Baseman. Uh, big fan of yours. Awesome fight last Friday. Hopefully the next time you get in, you, you get a, a decisive win this time. Hopefully uh, knock the guy out, man. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, September will be the next tournament. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know. Thank you for having me on. Um, I-, I appreciate it, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Yeah, All thank right, you. Same here. Thanks, Justin. All right. Please visit 5roundmma.com on our social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 5roundmma.com. All right, welcome back. As we uh, alluded to earlier, uh, the UFC had a fight card in Abu Dhabi this past Friday. Roy Nelson versus Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, big nog. Uh, I was at work, and I got text messages from Grandma saying, Roy Nelson just knocked out... Uh, no, Guerra. I was like, oh, already? But then I thought the time difference and fight passed. But and the, right after that, Guerra said, Big Nog needs to be cut now. So, Guerra, I want you to get the stage is yours. Elaborate this uh, point further, please. Okay, Big Nog, when's the last time he's been really competitive or facing for the title? Um, At this point, he's just a, a stepping stone for people. Uh, Damn, you're so harsh. <laughs> the last win was And the, the guy's uh, a legend. Kick it easy. Okay, okay, well, yeah, I, I, but, I agree he's a legend. <sighs> but the thing is, ever since he got knocked out by Cain Velasquez, he's been having a weak chin. So, I mean, it, what's yeah. going to happen is 
people are gonna knock well, him think, out. I easier. think I think his last win was against Dave Herman. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think he should have retired after the Frank Mir thing because um, which one? I mean, the staff well, no, and, but no, no, when he, he broke his oh, arm. Oh yeah, uh, bro- because it's like, it's like dude, like first of all, he's been to so much wars, and, then and he that's had to my other from thing. That. That's my other point is that this guy it's and he better, lost twice it's better for his health that yeah. he retires now because all the knockouts, the broken arm. Uh, all the damage, all the wars he's been through. I mean, I think it's safer for him just to retire. He's, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's making good money training other uh, MMA. Uh, I know, I mean, that's why the biggest people get tattoo people get tattoos of Nogueira. Yeah, on Team their, Nogueira. Yeah. Uh, so this guy, him, so yeah. he's the he's the institution in MMA. But like saying, like, what's the biggest? Uh, what you couldn't knock out Nogueira and damn hell if you, if you uh, submit submit the guy. Exactly. He's been knocked out. He's been submitted multiple times on the UFC. So what's what's there left, right? I think he even called out for uh, another rematch for Frank Mir for some reason. After the fight, yeah. The fight after else, I think he wants like, oh, I'll give me Frank Mir again. No, I, I kind of turned it off after he got knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then later on, but I mean, like he said, so what? Obviously, this leaves no guarantee. And, and uh, if you want to fight, you don't want to fight. Nah, you just retire. Now, of course, retirement come from now, right? I, I, I yeah, and I, and I think UFC should make some kind of like ambassador program where, where when these guys become this big and legends, maybe they should sign some kind of like like did he like a legends contract? <laughs> a legends contract. Uh, bring them in. You know, bring them in for promos, like maybe to do appearances and stuff like that. That way, they know that they for sure they have a job and still have something to, to do with the company. Yeah. Like because you know, you don't, you don't want like I mean, everyone loves Noguera, yeah. but do you really want to see him fight again after no. these well, devastating I'm just looking at wins? Alex Computer right now. He's 37 years old, yeah. and that's an but it's old be- 37. Cause yeah, because yeah. he's been in wars. He yeah, was, all he's the been 37 for eight years. And now. Because if you look at his fights, he's 34 and nine. Yeah. So I mean, he's gotten through a lot of fights. So I mean, uh, and nine losses, and most of them coming recently. Yeah. And brutally, I mean, exactly. It's the verse of Doom, remember, he, people forget that was, that was a pretty vicious submission, too. Yeah. So, so, I mean, like, cause he's know. not losing in decisions, he's losing submissions and, you know, yeah. knockouts. So, so the, but back to the only way he beat Noguero was with a decision, right? But not anymore. People are finishing him now. Exactly. I think when, when you become getting finished every time, that's time to uh, hang it up. It happened with Chuck Liddell. I mean, he was getting knocked out left and right. And, and what did Dana White say? For his help, I think it's same thing time with, for it. with Matt Hughes, too, who's getting finished all the time. So. Yeah, I think it's time for him to retire. And then also, I'm going to switch gears now. Uh, big Country Roy Nelson, this guy's always been on the fence about being fired. Uh, Dana White always says this guy has no heart, nothing. Uh, but yeah, he always seems to deliver in the almost, almost yeah. unlikely spaces, right? I, I like to call him the Ollie Trolley of MMA. <laughs> and let me tell you this. <laughs> and, and, uh, I don't think that's a compliment and, and, uh, to Ollie Trolley. I'm not, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to be mean or whatever, but uh, Ollie Trolley, sometimes I'm like, Dude, why do I keep you around? And then he goes and like he he like he does something amazing that I didn't know he was capable of doing. Uh, this is a love and, and, all the trolley one. And, and so Roy oh. Nelson, Roy Nelson is kind of the same thing. You you're like, dude, seriously, you're gonna keep on fighting. And then he goes out and knocks out Noguera, you know. And so he ma- manages to keep. He does something to keep his job. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so he he does just barely enough not to get fired. Yes, exactly. So like uh, before this, he he lost to uh well in his credit two decision losses to uh, Stipe Miocic, your boy, yeah, and then Daniel Cormier. So I mean, those are tough. Is he kind of like is he just in the middle? Like yeah, he's it, middle it, of the pack. And I, he's I, never gonna. I think he took over Frank Mir's spot. Yeah. And now it's pretty much he's if, like he, a if, he, if he if he can get through Roy Nelson, yeah, you're pretty much in the top two. But in, but but in a, a division right now that's like paper thin, is he not a contender right now? No, he's not. Well, he had, he lost he lost to uh, Junior Dos Santos. Okay, right. But who's not get, get tall shot anytime soon as long as Kim and he lost and he lost to Stipe it much Stipe, more. Stipe, Stipe, yeah, my boy. Okay, so basically right now he's like he, I I only see him facing the loser out of okay. the next couple of heavyweight matchups that are, that are coming on, rather than the winners. Okay, I'm just saying, as long as Cain Velasquez is a champion, you have to take Jordan Santos out of title consideration, right? Yes. yes. So, I totally agree with so that. So basically, he has what, Travis Browning, uh, Stipe, and Ver- Verdum in no particular order ahead of him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the two of those guys, all those guys are going to be fighting pretty soon, right? So they're going to yeah. be knocked out. He, he might be a contender just by not fighting anybody, right? Yeah. I will throw this out there, though. I'm pretty sure he's going to end up fighting Oscar Overing. Because Overeem doesn't yeah. want to take a, a a a big risk on his next opponent, mm. and Didn't it's a big surgery? name for Roy Nelson. Well, I don't know. Overeem's like he's, yeah, he's he know. says he has surgery, then yeah. he's okay, then he's then I, and then I also heard he, he was asking um what's his name Jackson Camp if they'll take him in. Uh, they already said yeah. yeah. I think he is going to join him. He's, that guy's weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so Overeem, like he doesn't want to fight. He calls out Brock Lesnar when he has WrestleMania coming up, and like <coughs> uh, yeah. he said he always wanted to join the Jackson Camp, but because you know. He fought. He was gonna fight Frank Mir and then Travis Browning. So he never made the jump. Now that now that those fights are over, he says it's cool for him to go to uh, yeah. Team Jackson. That they even asked Travis Browning if it was cool with him. He said, "Yeah, bring him on. I can learn a lot from him." So uh, it looks like he's gonna be. He is gonna be Team. So Jackson. like I said, but you said to people sleep on Roy Nelson, but he might be contender just 
by just sh- by default. Yeah, because you know? I mean, we had the conversation last week about how thin the division is right now. I mean, just Browning, Verdum, and uh, Miocic. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, well, he just needs to stay relevant. He might at least yeah. in like well, the top, obviously top five. Knock, knock out no exactly. Well. He, he might, and with pun intended, sneak in there. <laughs> <laughs> also, no, uh, notable victories like Clay Guida won. The uh, Ryan, Ryan Flair, Randy Ninja, used to be Jared Rosa, uh, Talis Lates won. Your, your boy, right? Sure. <laughs> Jim Alvarez and the Johnny Bedford and uh, Ronnie Yashana uh, f- uh, no contest a clash of heads whatever that yeah. means head and butts but um so that's it for um that fight night also we, we are, have a big Wednesday night yeah a big Wednesday night April 16th uh, in Canada uh, everybody's favorite fighter Michael Bisbee is returning to the action after uh, a <laughs> s- almost a serious uh, career ending yeah, but, injury, but before right? we get to the meat and potatoes here uh, uh, on the <laughs> prelims uh, what's on the, pre- who's uh, on the prelims bro uh, let me tell you that's why that's I bring it up <laughs> okay tell my us my boy Ryan Jimbo is back in action <laughs> anyway that, speaking of Jimbo Michael Bisbee made us lose Hold money on, thanks on. to you in Vegas uh, Dustin uh, Dustin Kimura is also okay. back in it yeah, come on now he, he's a big contender and then KG Noons uh, comes back and I think he's still trying to find his place in the UFC. Uh-huh. Maybe this is the fight that that, that kind of put him in in, 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 uh, in the mix finally. Sam Stout. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, okay, oh, and Sarah that, Kaufman's that, fighting too. That, oh, yeah, she is the Kaufman. I didn't know that. Yep. That's noteworthy. But um, speaking, of, I'm gonna go about the, the, the meat and potatoes of this. Michael Bisming against Tim Kennedy, the All American against that hated Brit, the red coat, right? Yeah. Um, it's basically. It, uh, it reminds me of a uh, Jason's, of the first war Jason's little rant on Michael Bisping. Uh, Jason Hendricks, what do you say? <laughs> you don't remember last time uh, we had him on? He was calling out Michael oh, Bisping. Oh yeah, that yeah. He's <laughs> a lot of talk, but not a lot of substance or yeah, something like yeah. that. But um, obviously, is this a, a, a about that's pivotal also in the middleweight division? You think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been, well, for both, I think uh, whoever wins, I mean, the the middleweight's a little bit more open now that Anderson Silva's gone. Chris Weidman. Obviously, everybody thinks that they can beat Chris. Yeah, anyway, Weidman. anyway, Vitor kind of like in. We don't know if he is gonna fight again. I think again the, the winner he, if out of this is be like better. either the third person in, in yeah. line to for a title or coming up. You know? Yeah. Well, look, just looking at the official UFC rankings, Bisbing is ranked number five, while Tim Kennedy is ranked number eight. Is it kind of low for Tim? Yeah, Kennedy? but look at the it, people it above low, them. But if if Tim Kennedy wins, you, uh, you know. uh, above Tim Kennedy is Mark Munoz, Luke Rockhold. Mark yeah, Munoz Mark Munoz lost. has a loss against yeah. Chris Munoz Weidman already. Fight. Uh, coming up, v- Vitor, we don't know where he's at, and uh, Vitor is still ranked third. And Machida, and Machida is already going to fight. So technically, these guys could kind of steal their way. Yeah, because into yeah. Yeah. the next contender. Munoz is fighting uh, Musasi. Yeah, oh. so that's a tough one for Munoz. They get so Munoz is the like hard guys to fight on. Uh. Yeah, so exactly. But, but, the, the winner but, out of Tim Kennedy but, versus but Michael Bisping. Even then, jump let's over say let's Mark say Munoz. let's say Musasi uh, beats yeah. b- b- beats him, and then Machida beats Chris Wyman. You can't give that. Who exactly. knows if they so can do that rematch? So Tim yeah. Kennedy this, and Michael Bisping has a lot. To do with it because Machida or Chris Wyman hasn't faced both these guys. So. Yeah, and also the uh, the, the Kennedy Bisping bout is serves as a main event for uh, the Tough Nations finale between yeah. uh, Canada, Canada and Australia. Team Australia. So you got uh, Patrick Cote against Kyle Noak in a welterweight bout. Uh, Cote is back at welterweight, right? He was up uh, at middleweight, then he yeah. came back to welterweight. Yeah. So um, obviously uh, I, I didn't get to see the season because I don't have fight pass, but um. <laughs> Actually, this one wasn't and on, on was Fight Pass. Pass. It, it was, was on Fox Sports. Fox Sports, really? Yeah. And then uh, notable, since I'm pretty sure you're the only no, one. No, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I saw a couple episodes. Uh, I mean, I like Kenna, but I have a love hate relationship with them. They <laughs> well, they sometimes bore Rory me. Mac, dude. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> yeah, and that's, well, what I'm well, Rory that's what I'm saying. But TriStar Monster. A, lot, a, a lot of Canadian productions bore me. I don't know why. <laughs> and so it really bored me to watch them in Canada. So <laughs> I don't know. Not, not even the uh, the uh, the bruteness of the Australians could, uh, you know. No, nope. I, I I can't even understand half the show to tell you the truth <laughs> with all those thick French accents and then the Australians accent. It's kind of that. a lot to keep, uh, keep track of. You got like a, a fight every week for the UFC. On top of that, you got um the UFC tonight, and then you got uh, the, uh, all these variations of tough. Because like, uh, but is, if is, this was and then all, you got to add in Bellator, but yeah. all and then this, for this guy, Glory, if all this was yeah. packaged in the fight pass. Not nice and neat like Dirty Network, it will work out it, perfectly. Right? Like I, I never miss NXT because I just watch it whenever. Yeah, NXT, oh man. <laughs> if you haven't seen NXT, that, that thing's amazing. <laughs> it's but better I mean, than like, TNA, so guys. Like, I, 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 just, I talk in my head because I, I, I don't watch this stuff, but um, is Tough Brazil, that's going on right now with Between Chill yeah, and... Yeah, that, that already took place. It took place, or is it, is it aired I think, already? I, I think, yeah, the, no, it's only on the Five Pass. Okay, so... Uh, it's only on the so Five Pass, the, and they're I like... Five Pass, I can watch that, and they're only like four episodes... I can watch the Nations on Fox Sports 1, right? They're four episodes in. And I think the episode they're about to show, or they just shown, yeah. is the one where they finally fight each other. So, oh okay. Well, are they, you think that the UFC is at risk of imploding? You know, stretching so far out that's gonna collapse that thing. Classic. I mean, there's just so much stuff. I mean, it's kind of like that's true. 
But um, just really quick before we leave the news and yeah. notes, uh, Albert had uh, he was watching Glory and he wanted to talk about Tyrone oh, yeah. Sponge. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah Tyrone me. Sponge, uh, Buster Anderson, Silva. I mean, it, it was almost <laughs> <On purpose. laughs> oh, uh, it was almost identical. No, it was yeah. almost identical. The guy checked him with his knee. Uh, he hit him full blast on the knee. He shattered his uh, his, his shin. They said they, they said that um, it wasn't a clean a clean break. It just shattered the shin. Yeah. But dude, it looked nasty, and I mean, it just reminded you of Anderson Silva all over again. As soon as he hit him, the guy he, uh, Ty- Tyrone Sponge just dropped to the ground. And said, "Dude, uh, yeah. all right, all right, that's it." But it's just crazy that uh, it, it was in the same fashion. But I like to say that this was uh, lack of technique, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Are I mean, you taking a shot at the black again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the uh, Black Tyrone Sponge what, what, is an accomplished yeah. kickboxer. He's been a kickboxer. Yeah. And he's a champ uh, yeah. in kickboxing. The thing is, Tyrone Sponge, what sucks for him is that he was up and coming in yeah. World Series of Five. Yeah, we yeah. saw him live, yeah. and he was pretty impressive. Yeah, no, I, 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 really, I really thought that he was he, the mentality was we come in here, we win the tournament, uh, and then in a couple months, we're back in the MMA. Yeah. But I think this throws a it's big really wrench in their, in their, in their plan. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then the other thing is uh, it hurts Tyrone Sponge when, once he comes back. Yeah. Because no. uh, I, th- this looks like a long thing, a yeah. long recovery, and then not only do you have to recover from this injury, you gotta go back into training mode. Yeah. You gotta get mentally uh, strong again, that you can throw those kids. I think it makes us want to focus. Okay, what do I want to focus more on? Kickboxing. Exactly. Or and so then uh, the last right. thing is remember practice your leg checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah really. apparently, obviously. Uh, check with your knees, guys. Check yeah, with your you knees. Can it break works. some legs. Also, uh, one final note that I wanted. Uh, Touch on that we talked about last week. Uh, Ronda Rousey is has been announced to face Alexis Davis. At Wait, I don't think this was the big thing that we. Well, because last week we talked about the rumor of Gina Carano, yeah, and yeah. Then, like for some reason, every, for some reason, every, every uh, website yeah. had a cyborg uh, quote about something. So I, I think they just couldn't get a deal done, and they just threw this one out there. Yeah. Even though uh, no, no, and that's no diss on uh, Alexis Davis. I mean, she's yeah, yeah. she's awesome. She just beat Jessica I in a very controversial match. I yeah. thought I, I I had Jessica I actually winning. Yeah. Uh, sh- uh, Alexis Davis also has a win over uh, uh Liz Kamuch. Yeah. So uh, she's she's no joke. Also, a credit to Ronda Rousey. I mean, she's a, how many times she fought already? She fights like what, three, or four times a year now, right? Uh, I think, but a, I don't think she takes a lot of punishment. Yeah, well, well that, that's, that's her. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that, why. that's, that's why. the main reason. But she, uh, fishes, she, she, fishes she looks like she's probably going to break some kind of record and fight like eight times this year. Yeah, because she's always up. I mean, she, <laughs> yeah. her fights over so quickly. Hey, line them up. I'll knock them down. So I, I think yeah. the more problem, the biggest problem with her is there's not enough competition. Yeah. That's true. But, or, um, or else she would be fine like every pay-per-view, I think. <laughs> <laughs> she probably could have. All right, that's it for this week. You guys have to talk about anything else? Anything else? No, that's, no, it. that's no? it. All right, so uh, until next week, we'll talk about the Tim Kennedy and Michael Bisbee sale that went. And, Most likely we'll talk about Tim Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> You're making pictures already? Mm. All right. So uh, until then, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 5 round MMA. That's F-I-V-E. We spell out the word 5 round MMA. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Podomatic for our Android-friendly friends. And always check out 5 round MMA.com. The first place you see our web show. I also want to direct you guys to OvertimeNation.com to read our articles, commentaries, and editorials. And also, when you're on OvertimeNation.com, it's your one stop site for all your sports needs from the NFL to pro wrestling to Champions League soccer. So, um, World Cup coverage World coming, Cup coming soon. Up soon. So, uh, go to OvertimeNation.com, Overtime Nation, where we talk sports. I also want to big, give a big thank you to the Madhouse Clothing Line, clothing. Clothing for the uh, fighter and fight fanatic, go shop to madhouse.com and follow him on Twitter at the Madhouse MMA. And also, when you follow him on Twitter, follow Redemption Martial Arts and follow us and hashtag MMA against bullying for your chance to win a free t shirt. We're getting close. We're almost to the 800 mark, so this contest ends. So the shirt is there for grabs. People, people just go. I think we need like 30 more followers. Uh, something like that. Just go Twitter. follow us, hashtag MMA against bullying. And you, you could possibly win a free t shirt. I mean, everybody loves free t shirts. I see people at the uh, any, any sports arena where they could hand out the, the, the Oh, bazooka, man, they go crazy. They go crazy for a free t shirt. This one, you got to just click. Uh, Follow, that's it. And also, uh, I want to thank uh, Top Rated MMA, makers of 100% American Made MMA Apparel. Go shop toprated.mma.com and follow them, follow them on Twitter at Top Rated MMA, which also reminds me, all of the, all of the trolley, who is today's top rated star of the show? Steven Rosso, yeah. Rosso Records. I knew the sound was a little bit too good today. <laughs> I, know, I just thought it was extra crispy today, right? And also, I want, I want a big thank you to Redemption Martial Arts. The RMA Foundation is a nonprofit organization committed to the anti-bullying awareness. Visit redemptionmartialarts.com and see how you can join the movement to stop bullying and follow them on Twitter at redemption underscore MA. Rise up against bullying, guys. Albert, take us away. I like to thank our executive producer, Guillermo Sita. I'd like to thank our engineer over there, Ollie the Trolley, uh, the winner of today's uh, top uh, rated star. star, Stephen Rosal with Rosal Records. Hit him up for any of your sound needs. And if you're thinking, why does Albert sound so good? That's why. 
Because uh, uh, like away from microphone, Albert sounds horrible. And then, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I sound horrible. Raspy voice. Uh, yeah. High pitched at it, times. Real, real quick, uh, prediction real quick. It's going to be the year of so- Cesaro uh, on oh WWE. <laughs> if you haven't checked out NXT, check it out. And if you haven't it's checked out, mark. that means you don't have the WWE Network, so you should go and get it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening. Cream of the crop. Ha, ha, ha.